So the question is, did I make a mistake buying this BMW X5 for a thousand pounds? Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video. Now today's video, if it goes down well with you guys, could form the first in a new series of videos called PX Bingo, Part Exchange Bingo. It's called that because here at Volks Wizard, I'm primarily a motor trader specializing in Volkswagen Group vehicles, but I'm pretty open-minded about what I'll take in part exchange if it's up to about £3,000. Now these cars can prove great fun, they can even make money, and as somebody's into cars, it's great for me to be able to see makes and models I wouldn't normally see as a VW specialist, but they can also go very wrong and I can regret the day that I took them in part exchange for a very long time. Now, I want to share with you that experience of buying these cars and, you know, I'm no expert in them, a bit like probably you are when you buy used cars, and we can see what kind of condition they're in when they're at this age and mileage, like this BMW X5 that's done 163,000 miles, which will be the subject of today's video. So, without any further ado, let's go and play PX Bingo. Okay, guys, well, let's get the ball rolling then by having a look at the outside of the PX Bingo £1,000 X5. It seems really weird to be showing you a car that's covered in dirt and scratches when normally they're pristine and polished for, for a video. But I think for this video, it seems to make more sense to just show you it as it came in. And to be perfectly honest, it wasn't that bad. Now, before we start looking at the detail, let's just take in the model. So this was the original X5, came out in 1999. It was one of the first um, SUVs, or they called it a sport activity vehicle because they didn't like sport utility vehicle at BMW. It was the first one to use a car chassis rather than a, a separate ladder chassis or even what the M-Class had, which was basically a truck chassis. This was basically a jacked up 5 Series, which was no bad thing. It was based on the E39, I think, and that was not a bad era for BMW when it came to build quality. So this car's done 163,000 miles, so about 10,000 miles per year. So probably not done an awful lot of motorway work and therefore it doesn't seem overly chippy. There's a lot of dirt on here and, and this time of year you get a lot of insects. But I reckon polished back, it, the front end would look pretty good. I think the front bumper might have been painted at some point because the paint looks a bit dull there and that gap looks a bit un-German, well, even though this was built in America, but that still looks too big. But once you get past the bumper, the rest of it is actually remarkably good. There are some light scratches. I think this plastic wheel arch has taken the brunt of something, but the wings actually survive there, so that could be easily improved. All this will polish out, no problem. That wing mirror looks a bit too matte. Yeah, that's probably, <laughs> it looks like the one on my TCR. That's been replaced, but they do stick out a lot, and it is a big car. There are some minor sort of car park dents which are inflicted by other people by and large, but you look at that and you think the steel looks really strong and then you start pressing it and it just doesn't give. On a modern car, you get them moving around and this is just incredible. Wow. Yeah, this was a really good era for car quality up to probably the end of this generation when they went to the next one. Things went downhill a bit then, but Audi and BMW were really, really making them very very solidly back then. Okay let's look at the tyres and brakes then because these are important they you know could be the difference between life and death and when a car comes in with these worn out you do think the owner's probably not looked after it very well generally so on this car we've got decent tyres on the back we've got Avons so there's probably about four mil there brake disc look surprisingly good so that's good at the front we have got budgets called Nexon but they've got a fair bit of tread probably five to six mil and the discs look reasonably good as well. So, yep, all in good order down there. I quite like those sill steps, don't you? They're, I don't know if they're standard, but they look pretty cool. They look really solidly attached, unlike some of the accessory stuff, say, for the um, current Tiguan. We do have some scratches on the back bumper here, but actually some of that might polish out. The load lip's actually remarkably good but then the tailgate does come down over it, so that might help. Wheels, some minor marks. They've been refurbished before where it's peeling a bit, but they're, I think, a good clean. They would look fine. So externally, a good machine polish, maybe adjust that bumper, you would have a very tidy looking car. And that's important because these look 
really good if they're kept original and in good condition. So if you've got bits hanging off it, you've got funny number plate, you've got black wheels, tinted windows, they look crap. But a nice clean original X5 is a bit like a nice clean original Range Rover. It still looks pretty classy, especially with original number plates, even though they're from Bradford. So yeah, right, now let's have a look inside because it's quite an interesting spec on this one. The car was part X for a Porsche Macan. That had a really interesting spec and so is this one. So yes, taking its wonderful beigeness, so it's really of its era. It does lighten up the cabin, but um, it does also show dirt. But then would you rather see the dirt and clean it or just sit in it and not know it's there? Whatever, it hasn't worn too badly though. I think a good clean and that would come up well carpets are beautiful now i clean a lot of cars i'm not afraid to say i clean everything i sell I don't farm it out to anybody so i get to see carpets a lot and i get to scrub a lot of carpets and modern cars carpet quality is going down a lot this is pretty good i think you'd probably be quite happy having this in your house so yeah that's really nice i mean look at the door cards not an awful lot wrong with those not much kicking on there there's a bit of the beige is worn off there but it's actually worn off in such a way it doesn't look too bad we have got some wood but um let's just ignore that it's cracking a tiny bit but yeah i don't really like wooden cars it's making a comeback but it isn't this sort of nasty vanden pla metro kind of wood but this car is pretty loaded with extras it's got a panoramic glass sunroof which appears to work that. How cool is that? Um, what else? It's probably got. I don't know if this is the blind, is it? Up there? Not sure I'm doing that right, but it looks like a picture of an envelope. So that's good. We have um, air suspension, which means the car goes up and down, or at least it should do. Let's turn the engine on. So if we press that, what's it doing? Apparently BMW owned Land Rover at the time of making the X5, so they nicked a load of ideas off them. I just hope they engineered them in a German way. So, better thinking about it. Got auto lights, which pretty trick back in the early noughties cruise control so this is worn a bit here which i guess is unavoidable it's that old soft soft touch plastic issue we got with the mark 4 golf the infotainment screen looks very very dated reminds me of a sinclair zx81 computer but it all works apart from it won't read the nav disk that's in the boot it could be the disk it could be the drive whatever i think the navigation is going to look like playing on an atari 2600 so you might as well just plug your phone in here and use that but the radio is okay it's got auxiliary heater as well which must heat the cabin up before you start the engine so if we go to yeah gps navigation let's try that yeah it won't read the cd but we can forgive that uh, menu i don't know anyway the radio works i can listen to radio 4 I'm happy with that. And the aircon does blow cold, which is a real issue on newer cars, but I think of this era they were made a little bit better in that respect. Heated seats still make your bum warm. It's got all this Land Rover hill descent stuff, which is probably just computerised really. And can open the boot here with that. Yeah. And then, hmm. No idea what this is for. Can anybody shed any light on that? The genuine BMW parts. Any suggestions? Goes in the cup holder there. We have this big hole to put stuff in. And a manual handbrake, which is nice and reliable. Again, another reason to buy an older car. We've got a pack of, hmm how to put seven digit postcode entry and a picture of a semi-naked woman. What's that got to do with entering digits, I ask? 
bit odd. Okay, what's also important when buying a car like this is seeing what paperwork you get. Now GDPR makes this a bit difficult now because some people just bin it all, but if people give it to you, you should keep it and just get approval to pass it on to the next owner because it makes a difference. Let's have a look in the back. So this is, yeah, pretty much mint, isn't it? Not a bad place to be, especially with that sunroof. Right, paperwork. I can't show you names and addresses and stuff, but these are all the receipts I got with the car, which I was pretty pleased about. In here is a service book. So that was a 10, about 8,000 miles ago. And then we've got a reasonably good parade of stamps. So that's not bad. And then I can't show you the name on the logbook, of course, but I can tell you how long the lady had it. Let me just take that aside. There's four owners in total, and Amanda acquired it 10 years ago. So she had it for a whole 10 years, which is a good sign because it just points to a long-term um, sort of care regime for the car. Right then, I think that's enough poking around the car. Should we have a quick look under the bonnet? Let's have a quick look under the bonnet of the X5. Pull this lever up. Okay, so there we have a straight six diesel turbo engine. I think it's called the M57 and that's been out for two decades now. So yeah, there are probably some problems with it, like any engine, but a specialist can prevent them or if the worst comes to the worst, can fix them for relatively low cost. So if it's running today, take it to a specialist, get them to check it over and recommend any things to stop problems occurring. And it should last a very long time. It's such a simple engine, which means it is quite dirty out of the exhaust, but you can still use it in most of the UK. You don't have to drive into London or Bristol or Birmingham. There's still plenty of other places to drive cars and enjoy, enjoy cars like this. And it's an SUV as well. It's a proper four by four. So lots of countryside where you can drive these cars without feeling too guilty. While we're down here, let's have a look at this. This is, I think, the auxiliary heater. So this will warm the cabin up when the engine is off and you can program it to do that using the I suppose you could call it the infotainment system in the center console here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it could go wrong, but if it does, just don't use it. While we're down here, just check for anything looking a bit funny. These stickers on the slam panel are a good sign, but it's all original. So that's, that's a really good engine bay for an old car like this. Right then, guys, you've had a good tour of the X5. And now it's time to go driving with Robert from Autogafool. Let's go. Okay, guys, welcome to the cabin of the BMW X5 in all its wonderful beigeness. Now, you can laugh at beige cabins, but they do offer a sense of space and comfort, particularly when combined with the panoramic glass roof we have here, and particularly when you have got a lot of space because this is quite a big car, but it does feel soothing. So let's firstly talk about the engine. We have a three litre straight six BMW turbocharged diesel and it's going to be quite a dirty old thing now. It's pre Euro 5, I think it's so probably like a Euro 4, which means no DPF and all that. So it is the devil on four wheels, but that means it's relatively simple. And that means at 163,000 miles, there's a chance that it will keep on going without any massive builds. These lovely, clean, modern diesels got so much going on that they'll probably get written off well before when something very expensive packs up. So in that respect, if you're gonna buy a high mileage diesel, it's probably better to do it with an older one like this, even though there are places now where you can't actually drive them. Gearbox wise, we've got a six speed Tiptronic, kicks down, well, it's not in manual mode like it is now. Kicks down, all right. And you can drive it in tip mode if you if you want to. It's probably great if you're driving in snow and mud to have manual control of the gears and the brakes when somebody pulls out in front of you with a trailer are pretty good. So as I said in the intro, the brakes look really fresh, which is a good sign for this car. I mean, it's really important to have good brakes. And the fact the owner cares about that means a lot. And the chassis, well, it doesn't squeak and rattle. It's done 163,000 miles. I don't know how much has been spent on maintaining the bushes and so on, but it is amazing. We do have air suspension instead of coil springs. Again, another recipe for expense, but take it to a specialist 
and they'll be able to sort those out relatively cheaply now because these cars have been around for quite literally decades. The other thing that specialists can probably sort out cheaply is the rattle from the sunroof. If you can fix that by going like this, you can actually feel the play in the panel. That's something a BMW specialist will, I'm sure, sort out very, very quickly. But the most amazing thing is the way this car goes round corners. It's a big old heavy car, it's done 163,000 miles. It's from the 90s, the original design, not when the time when chassis were brilliant. But it doesn't seem to need the artificial horizon you'd expect on a car of this period. It's quite good. So yeah. I thought the, the KN in the 2003 was the first SUV to go around corners properly, but no, this car does go around corners properly. It's not sporty, but somewhere between sporty and dangerous is normal in this car. Corners relatively normally, which is amazing considering its height and everything. So yeah, that was the biggest surprise with this X5. So. The question is, did I make a mistake buying this BMW X5 for £1,000 or did my numbers come up in PX Bingo and I stand to make a decent profit on it when I finally come to sell it? Well, the fact it all seems to work, it drives okay, tyres are good, brakes are good, even all the sort of electronics seem to largely work is quite a good thing and I think there is definitely profit to be had with this car, which is great news. If you're interested in buying it, drop me a line. I do have to make a profit on it because that is the nature of the business, but it's got to go at some point anyway. And if I can spare all the eBay communications that these cars tend to attract them so much, the better. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Volkswizard video, which may or may not be the first in a series of PX Bingo videos. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment, let me know what you think of this kind of video. Please share it if you like it. Please subscribe if you like it as well and I'll see you for the next one soon. Thanks for watching.